Welcome to the season premiere of Take Two, the talk show where we take two actors and get two takes on the real lives of working performers. I'm your host, Jeff Savage. Being an actor is truly an adventure, and in today's episode, I'd like to introduce you to a pair of incredibly talented ladies who are blazing a trail through the world of animation and voice acting. Though performing character voices can seem like a fun job, it's definitely not a game. It takes a lot of hard work and a commitment to the craft to be successful in this creatively rewarding and competitive field. I'm delighted to be joined on set today by Rebecca Chiara Morano and Mary Morgan, two gifted actresses who not only use their voices to bring life to some of your favorite animated characters, but also have other unique talents and roles they play in the greater landscape of acting. I can't wait to get this conversation started. Rebecca, Mary, welcome to Take Two. Thank you for having us. Thank you very much. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So the theme of this season of Take Two is all about adventures in acting. And our audience is interested in knowing your backstories. Uh, where did your passion for acting come from? And what was the journey you took to get to where you are today? I want to start with you, Rebecca. Uh, tell our audience a little bit about Rebecca Chiara Morano. <laughs> Uh, so it's a little bit complicated. Uh, I guess my passion started off when I was really young because I came from a performing background. Uh, my mom was a director in L.A. Uh, my dad is a professional audience member. <laughs> Not really, but that's what we call him. Um, so I started acting very young, theater, film, circus arts, etc. cetera. Um, but uh, even though my family loved it, they were like, you know, the life of an actor is really hard. We'd rather you be a doctor. So throughout most of my life, I was also doing like medical internships and things like that. Um, I have my degree in forensic psychology, but wow. by the time I was ready to graduate, I was like, I've enjoyed the academic part, but I don't think this is what I want to do as a career. Um, so I gave myself a year to be like, okay, I'm going to go full time into acting, see where I land. And luckily it kind of turned out like this. <laughs> fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, Mary, same question to you. Where, uh, where did your acting journey start from? And uh, tell our audience a little bit more about Mary Morgan. Well, um, I don't I don't have a family background uh, in the perform performing arts, but um, I pretty much grew up with a tape recorder. It's one of my favorite toys. Um, I loved listening to uh, stories that were, you know, narrated for me, uh, cartoon books like From My Little Pony, and I just would listen to them over and over and over, and then I would try to kind of act out what I heard. And then I started watching cartoons and started acting out what I heard. Uh, but then, of course, uh, the, the live action movies came along and I would keep thinking, what would it be like to be in that position, to have those decisions? And that kind of grew on me until I started getting into theater when I was very young. And I started doing puppet shows as well uh, during the summers off, off from school. And little by little, I just started building more into theater and then little by little more into film and TV. But voiceover uh, came along and um, that's really has been um, a great passion for me. I love any kind of form of acting, but voiceover, I could just just totally fall in love with and marry, even though I'm already married. <laughs> I mean, it ties back to the tape recorder as, as a kid. It's kind of the, the building blocks of, you know, the genesis of your career. So that's fascinating. Mm -hmm. That's really fascinating. Going back to uh, something you said, uh, Rebecca, uh, tell me about circus arts. You know, you yeah. mentioned that. It's a, it's a, it's, it's an interesting term. My mind's going a thousand miles a minute. What's, what's that mean? What's that all about? Yeah, I started doing that when I was 10, actually. Um, I was at a camp, and I, to be honest, I was not having a good time. Um, but there was, like, a passing circus that kind of came through, and they were like, hey, we want to, like, audition some of your kids and see if they can do some stuff, and we'll, like, incorporate it into, like, your camp and have other people come. Um, and because I'd been doing ballet all my life until that point, I was able to do uh, this thing called globetrotting, which is essentially, like, the, the giant balls outside Target. Um, okay. You go on there and you're able to balance and do things on it, like a jump rope or hula hoop or whatever. Um, and I, I, they took me from that and I was able to do that. And then from then on, for every summer, I was doing some kind of like performing arts. So it went from like globe trotting to like tumbling to juggling, including like juggling torches and just, it, I even got to be a ringmaster one time. Wow. I mean, that's, that, that's fascinating. It sounds like acting, you know, it kind of took you on to different, different things and different, uh, different, different, different avenues and things like that do you wear other hats in the acting community uh do you do other things beyond circus arts and uh and voice acting <laughs> yeah uh one of my other major things is i'm a casting director for a lot of independent studios oh cool 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 uh, which is a really cool opportunity because i know there's a lot of you know official casting directors in la and stuff where they're very used to working in the studios with big names like 
Disney, Pixar, whatever. But sometimes I think it's really valuable to be able to help independent studios that don't really know the process of hiring talent or how to get uh, people within that project. Mm -hmm. So it's been a really rewarding experience. And I love also giving back to the voiceover community and kind of helping other people get their start or, you know, build up their current career um, working with other studios like around the world. That's fantastic. So if uh, they are looking for a particular style, a particular voice print, you say, I know somebody, or I, you, you audition other people yourself to put, push them forward for those roles. That's, that's fascinating. Kind of opens up the, the view of what being an actor is all about when you see it from the other side of the, uh, of the, of the table as well. Well, um, you know, I want to, I want to ask, uh, I'm going to ask you, Mary, here. Uh, how do you navigate the uncertainties and surprises that come with an acting career? Um, I do a lot of planning ahead. So, you know, if, I, if I'm required to be on a set uh, the very next day, I make sure, you know, that I have uh, side jobs that I can do that will allow me to do that. And, you know, um, teaching, teaching yoga classes in the morning okay. or doing dinner theater shows on the weekend. And... Uh, tremendous support from my family, by all means. And so, um, but I tend to always plan ahead and make sure I get up at the right time, that I have my ways. So I set the address I'm supposed to be at. And, and for me, it's just constant planning ahead and being prepared if I have to be somewhere at the drop of a hat. Yeah, I can imagine if you have to be one place on the weekend, you're doing another gig across town, you know, Finding the time to be there at the time that you're supposed to be there, it's a lot of balancing, a lot of juggling to uh, to make that happen. So, um, you know, same question back to you, Rebecca. The acting, you know, career, it's it takes a lot of flexibility and it does take a lot of, uh, you know, just being flexible, I guess is a great way to put it. But how do you navigate the uncertainties that come with the uh, the acting career? Yeah, you got to roll with the punches. Flexibility, uh preparedness and then also perseverance because I think sometimes it can really get people feeling down if they're not constantly booking or they don't know what's going on and if you can like take a step back and be like hey I'm probably not doing anything wrong mm -hmm. but also I'm going to take a step back I'm going to reevaluate what I've been doing is there something different I can focus on in this point in time or is there something I can do that's completely opposite and try something new that can kind of break you out of that uh, bad feeling. Well, sure. I think that mental health and positive reinforcement and affirmations always help with anything. But Mary, like, how do you, like, you know, do you, do you have any specific tactics that you use to kind of, you know, reinforce your, your belief in yourself and your abilities when things are slow and that there's something that's not necessarily, you know, keeping you fully engaged? Well, you know, something I do because I want to keep myself self-motivated. Mm -hmm. And so every night I write down, you know, what to be thankful for. I love that. During the day. That's fantastic. And to keep that in mind, you know, for the next day. And I also am obsessed with learning new things. So if work is kind of slow or there's dry spells, I have to keep myself busy all the time. So I'm actually uh, doing some screenwriting now as well. Oh, nice, nice. And that's I'm talking about being a casting director, you know, screenwriting. That's another just extension of the industry that, uh, you know, actors find themselves doing doing more than that. So that's fantastic. Congratulations. I want to uh, kind of shift gears a little bit here, and I want to have you tell us about a time when your acting journey took you on an unexpected adventure, since this whole season's about adventures in acting. Um, you know, is there a memorable standout moment um, in which you experienced a great triumph or perhaps something that didn't quite work out that, you know, became a learning experience? Uh, Mary, I'm going to go back to you on this one. Okay. So probably... Um... Something that didn't go quite the way I wanted it to was I was trying a uh, corporate narration. I always want to try different aspects of voiceover. And I actually um, did the job. The client said that was great. But then I didn't hear back from them. And they paid me, thankfully. But I didn't hear back from them. And I said, hey, was everything okay, you know? And they're like, well, we decided to go in a different direction. You know, you have a great read, but you sound so incredibly young. Oh. And I was like, oh, that's true, you know? I can't talk about, you know, car insurance and all these things if I sound like a teenager. So that was just a realization that, okay, maybe corporate narration isn't for me at this time, but it could be down the road. Yeah, well, let me ask you this. Uh, some of our audience members, they may know about voiceover, but may not necessarily know what corporate narration actually is. Can you give our audience an example or two of like 
what what type of work is corporate narration? So, you know, there are a lot of companies that may have uh, videos that they want their clients to watch. Uh, it's also just kind of, you know, how the company works. Or maybe if there are new people joining the company, there could be, you know, um, things to avoid like, you know, sexual harassment. What's expected of you in the workplace? What is, you know, not tolerable? Uh, and then there might be discussions of, again, how the company works, what you know, what's involved, what you need to be prepared to learn. And those are often, you know, maybe 15 to 20 minutes, but they're always... They're not, they're not seeing for the public. They're always... Internal, internal. training videos and modules and yeah. things like Sometimes that. Sometimes they're called explainer videos as well. Okay. But mini corporate narration is mainly for the company itself. Gotcha. All right. Very good. Very good. Um, Rebecca, same question to you. Um, memorable moments, moment of doubt, weakness. <laughs> you know, what about your acting journey and turned into an unexpected adventure? I got cast in one project based specifically just on my acting range. Um, and originally they were like, yeah, we're going to need you to record a project within two weeks. It's going to be like 20 different characters. And I'm like, yeah, sure, that's fine. I can always do like a different accent or a different tone, whatever. Uh, I book the role and then they're like, oh, yeah, no. Well, we're going to tell you the exact tones we want. You can't do any accents and they all kind of have to be around the same age. And I'm like, OK. So it was kind of a learning opportunity where I had to like dig into my back pocket and be like, OK. Let me think about all the different ways you can shape a character because they all have to sound distinct. And it was just a fun opportunity to really go back to basics of like how to create a character and make them believable and unique. Gotcha. Well, speaking of making characters, these two fine uh, character voice actresses here are going to join me after this break for a fun game called Five Questions Animation Edition. Don't You're not going to want to miss this. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Jeff Savage, marathon runner and author of the number one Amazon bestseller, Savage Resilience, Conquer Adversity and Be Your Own Hero. In this powerful book, you'll discover correlations between what it takes to finish a marathon and what it takes to be successful in any long-range goal you may have. Order your copy of Savage Resilience today on Amazon or by visiting jeffsavageonline.com. The audiobook is also available on Audible and the iTunes Store on Apple devices. I'm Jeff Savage, and I encourage you to conquer adversity and be your own hero. You know you need video, but maybe you think you have a face for radio? We've got you covered. Our roster of on-camera talent is ready to be your spokesperson, demo your product, or even be your brand ambassador. Need help with your video marketing strategy, content, or talent? Learn more at SyncLabMedia.com. Welcome back to Take Two. Every episode features a fun segment where I put my actors in the hot seat for a fun little exercise. Today, we are going to do a little game called Five Questions Animation Edition. Now, Rebecca, Mary, I'm gonna ask you five specific questions about what it's like to actually, you know, be a, be a animation voice actress. And, uh, you know, just your personal, you know, perspectives on, on things. So. In a rapid fire sense, I'm just gonna ask you, uh, Rebecca, first. If your voice was a flavor, what would it be and why? Maybe some kind of like fruit flavor that's like extremely sweet, but there's like some weird ingredient on the inside, like a gummy worm or something that you're not expecting. Okay, I like that. What's the most bizarre noise you've had to make in the recording booth? I do a lot of animal sounds and a lot of creature effects. If you could have a superpower based on one of the characters you voiced, what power would it be? Actually, I do. I play a, um, a essentially a cat with wings. She's called a magic mixie in a Netflix show called Net Magic Mixies, and she's like super positive and she glows in the dark. So I feel like that could be cool. Oh, fantastic! I love that too. Now, what anime character's outfit would you wear to a costume party? <laughs> uh, any anime character, anyone that voice. Yeah, anyone. Um. Honestly, I have done this before. Um, my, my favorite anime is Hunter x Hunter, and I have cosplayed as Crolla Lucifer, who is like the main antagonist of one of the arcs. Uh, so I just think he has a fun fit. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. And uh, finally, which anime character would you pick to be your real life best friend? Uh, you know, that's a very tough decision. Um, you know, actually, I am going to go with an animal sidekick. Um, so I, like many others, I grew up with Pokemon, and I personally see myself as a human version of Psyduck, so I'm going to say Psyduck. Okay. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right. Mary Morgan, you're in the hot seat. Okay. Your five questions. Going to start with you. 
What's the strangest direction you've ever received from a director during a recording session? I was asked to sound both feminine and masculine at the same time. Okay, okay. and, uh, and how, did, uh, how did you respond to that uh, direction? <laughs> I pretty much just um, adjusted my voice until they said, that's it. Okay, awesome. All right. What's the one line from any character that you've voiced that you'll never forget? So that would have to be from my, the first uh, cartoon booking I ever had in my career. Um, it was a show called Bolopolis, and it was directed by Keith Alcorn of uh, Jimmy Neutron. And uh, in the script, um, I'm playing a little boy, and the boy is so busy playing a video game, he's kind of not able to concentrate. And so uh, he's talking to his dog, and his dog asks him, you know, are you sure about something? And he says, I'll bet you $100,000, you know, or $1,100, I know that I know it's this to be true, or something like that. But it was the it was the backwards of $1,000. <laughs> so I'm like, gee, you know, I, I, I probably would have said that, you know, when I was eight or nine. Yeah, yeah things that stick with you for sure. Well, which character that you've voiced would you trust to save the world? Hmm. I have qu had quite a few characters that uh, do save the world, but um, a character I'm uh, playing right now in a cartoon from Dubai, uh, he's a sidekick character, uh, and his name's Obeyed, and he's pretty much, you know, like, um, he he's best friends with, the, with the original with the character that does save the world, but he has the potential to save the world himself. Okay. If you know, if he, if there was an episode focused only on him, he would have a way to save the world. Gotcha, gotcha. If you could swap lives with any anime character for a day, who would it be? Uh, could it be any anime character? Uh -huh. So, um, one of my favorite movies is Howl's Moving Castle. Oh, I love that movie too. And I would love to be Sophie. Okay, great, 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 great. <laughs> And finally, Mary Morgan, have you ever been inspired to try something new because of a character you voiced? Uh, I'm actually, draw, um, I'm a huge fan of traveling. I love doing any kind of travel, but with each travel, I like to do something very spontaneous, something that often my parents tell me they don't want me to do. Yeah. And so, you know, um, I've been skydiving, I've been canyon swinging, I've been uh, blackwater, I've, I've been uh, doing blackwater rafting, I've done things. That and then, but they tell me, please don't do that again. I'll find something else that they can't tell me. Don't do that again. Oh my! And I'll keep doing that. I did. I did a city, uh, or size skyscraper walking in New York City, and because as long as they tell me don't do that, they can't. <laughs> I can say, well, you didn't tell me not to do that. And many of my characters in cartoons, they they fly. They you know <laughs> all these crazy <laughs> things, and that's kind of the mindset I have. Is I want to try this because. I am going to have only one life. Mm -hmm. I want to be on my deathbed looking back thinking, I did this, I did that, I did that. I didn't just limit myself. Uh -huh. And so many characters have inspired me to look into all these things. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is adventures in acting right there. So now I want to ask you both, um, you know, did, did animation find you or did you find animation in your career? Were you always inspired to want to do voices for for cartoons and anime or was it something you stumbled across later on in uh in your in your acting journey uh mary i want to go with you okay so i would say um it was kind of both ways i found animation and and animation found me because again i watched uh, cartoons on nickelodeon when i was a kid i remember you know some of my favorite shows like the uh, mysterious cities of gold was one of my favorites and my little pony and i would just think i want to be that i want to be the voice of a, a magic pony or I want to be a voice of a kid who's going on all these adventures and then later on in life um when I decided to finally look into voiceover because I really wanted to focus on film and theater uh it just turned out that because of all the background I had in theater and of the puppet shows I was doing when I was a kid it was so much easier for me to break into uh, animation and uh anime dubbing and cartoon uh, from cartoon cartoons from other countries and video games because of all that influence I had as a kid gotcha that's amazing so a question to you, Rebecca. Did uh, did you find anime or did uh, animation find you? <laughs> uh, I would also say mine's a combination. Um, because I was kind of like dabbling in voiceover along with a lot, of, a lot of other performing arts, I would say it found me in the way that I kind of realized, oh, yeah, like this is a thing specifically for anime because I was uh, part of the anime club in college. Oh, great. But before that, I'd only watched dubs. And so like a lot of other people who don't really think much about voice acting, they don't think about the voice behind it. They just see it as one character. 
But since I started watching subs, I was like, oh, yeah, there's people who put their voices in that character's body. Um, but I would say that I found animation or anime um, after that when I decided to pursue it because um, I knew that I wanted to go with that medium. I wanted to do character voices as opposed to, I think, a lot of other people who start off with voiceover. They kind of fall into it because someone goes up to them. They're like, oh, my God, you have an amazing voice. Um I have a pretty average speaking voice, but it's more what I can choose to do with it as far as range. That really helps with that. That's it. That's incredible, incredibly insightful as well. Now, this actually is a natural segue into um, you know the audience wants to know you know firsthand from a couple of key uh, voice actresses you know a little bit more about the craft. How do you dial in to that character? You know how do you how do you take a cartoon image? and then create the voice for that character. You know, what are some steps you have to take inside you to put yourself into that pers particular persona? And uh, Rebecca, I'm actually going to go back to you on that one first. Uh, you know, what's what's the steps you take to get into character? Yeah, so I think it differs each time. I'm a very visual person. So if I have an image of the character that really helps me, because sometimes if I just see them, I'm like, okay, I know exactly how they're supposed to sound. But other times, uh, you have to play around with it. And you kind of have to dissect it. You have to think, okay, think about their age. Think about, do we want them to have high pitch, middle pitch, low pitch? Do they have texture? You know, is it more raspy and gruff? Is it really airy? Um, you can also think about uh, how their, spot, their talking speed is. Do they talk really fast? Um, do they enunciate well? Or do they kind of have like a lisp? Or do they kind of like slur their words? And all of those little details um, will help make the character different and kind of tell you a little bit more about who they are as a person. Gotcha. Do you go back into their into their backstory and their in their motivations and find out like you know childhood traumas <laughs> that form their you know their the way they look at the world or is that just maybe going a little bit too deep into uh, you know finding the character? I think it depends. I think if you can, that's great. Like if you know that there's a character that like let's say we know as a backstory they came from like the the not having the most money. Um, and so they speak very eloquently and they have like super perfect diction, but maybe sometimes when they're not paying attention, it slips back into like a slight dialect, like something that could kind of hint at that could really build a character. Ah, interesting. Little subtle nuance. <laughs> uh, Mary, same to you. Uh, our audience uh, would love to, you know, find out how you get into character. You know, you, uh, you know, what are some, some of the, the techniques and the tactics that you use to dial into a specific character? So usually um, I will ask my clients, you know, can you tell me a little bit about the character? And they'll provide either, you know, a background or such, especially if they, if they don't have the character animated yet, because I worked on um, shows that, you know, I even they can't describe what it's gonna, the character's going to look like yet. But they'll give me a background and tell me, you know, the personality. And, you know, maybe I'll ask, you know, the age range. And then from there, I'll kind of just come up with some ideas again. And then they'll tell me, no, more this, more that. Um, if they give me absolute complete control, again, I have to kind of come up with, okay, if it's a little boy, I do a lot of little boy voices. You know, does are his teeth misshaped? Or, you know, is he going through puberty soon? Or, you know, because you, you have all kinds of textures you'll work with, and you could do raspy, you can do high pitch. And so I ask myself all these questions, you know, and then the client will tell me, we like this, or no, let's try something different. Gotcha. All right, so it's a it's it's a little give and take. Sometimes you add to the direction from, and then the directors come back and say, you know, dial it back a little bit, or you know, add this. Yeah, that's interesting. All right, well, at this time, I want to give you both an opportunity to you know talk a little bit about uh, you know where our get our audience can find you and anything that you want to talk about that you're currently working on. Rebecca, anything you want to plug or any uh, any websites or social media that you'd like to uh, share with our audience here today? Yeah, so I always have new projects coming out, so I don't have one specific one I would plug. But you can always find my work on my website, which is rcmvoice.com. My Twitter handle is at rcmvoice, and my Instagram is, I think, rcm underscore voice. Fantastic. Uh, Mary, how can our audience find out more about you and everything that you have going on? So uh, I do have a website, marymorganvo.com. Uh, I am on most social media sites. I spend the, ma um, the majority of my time on LinkedIn, though. I'm on LinkedIn every single day. I am obsessed with networking and keeping up with what's going on in the industry. Uh, but sometimes you can find me posting about, you know, a, a new cartoon I'm working on, one I am allowed to share. It's called Quantum Heroes Dynaster. Um, and it's a show from South Korea, I believe. And it's going to be um, uploaded on YouTube. 
so you can find episodes on YouTube. Nice. And um, but I'll announce things on Twitter, which be um, Mary Morgan Voice or Instagram Mary Morgan Voiceover, no spaces. Uh, I'm also on Twitch. I love uh, video games, so I'm also uh, streaming on Twitch, and you can also find me there at Mary Morgan Voice. And I'm also happy to answer questions or even talk about voiceover if people are interested. Gotcha. Well, fantastic. Thank you for thank you for sharing that with us today. Um, Rebecca, I want you to tell our audience, give you 30 seconds here. Somebody out there is watching this show today, and they're just starting their acting journey. What's one piece of advice that you will give them to help guide them along their way? Uh, I think a lot of people really focus on the acting portion, which is amazing. But the biggest thing that's really helped me is the business aspect. Take some business courses. Uh, I don't know if it's a free plug, but I started off with Edge Studio and I was able to do a lot of courses on economics and marketing and branding. And I think that's what's really going to help you to keep growing your business alongside just auditioning. Fantastic. Mary, um, tell our audience you know, a little advice on uh, just starting their acting journey as well. I'd say be prepared to step out of your com- your comfort zone. Do not limit yourself whatsoever. You may be asked to do something you never thought about doing before. And the more experience you have, the more knowledge that you can give yourself, then the more opportunities will come your way. Well, fantastic. Rebecca Chiara Morano, Mary Morgan, thank you so much for being a guest on Take Two. I'm Jeff Savage. You'll find out more about me by visiting jeffsavageonline.com. You can find Take Two on social media on LinkedIn and Instagram and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Sync Lab Media Studio. You can catch all our episodes there and on the Sync Lab Media Network. Thank you for watching Take Two and we'll see you again next time. Thank you.